and hello, welcome back. It's me, Ghost Critic. And you know, there has been all this huge DC New 52 madness that we forgot to talk about. You know, some pretty outstanding comics that are coming out of Marvel too. And um, I've got two this week and they are exceptional. They are so different, but so perfect. If I was doing a pick of the week this week, because I don't think it's possible with the whole DC on top of it, um, I would be hard pushed of which of these two to pick. So, Dan Slot, you are killing me with this. It is so, so good. Amazing Spider-Man, it's number 668, part two of the main Spider Island story. To me, this is the epitome of what a good comic should be like. It's bold, it's bright, it's colourful, it's fun to read, and it's just, in a weird way, it's kind of relatable. The storyline is relatable in a kind of wish fulfilment, you know. What if we had spider powers? What would we do with it? And you know what? Anyone can jump into this story. They, any new reader can grab issue, you know, 667 or 665 if you want to get the, um, the prelude as well. And you'll be fine. All you need to know. Manhattan Island, Long Island, whatever island it is. Everyone's got spider powers. How cool is that? Everyone knows Spider-Man. You don't need to know his origin story. You don't need to know his history with Jackal on the front. You just know he's a bad guy. Bad guys are pretty the same all over. They want to do over the gig guy. Anyway, why did I like this comic so much? Why is it so perfect? Let's start. Number one, the amount of characters that are in this issue is just phenomenal. You have got every Marvel superhero team here. Really, you've got the Avengers, you've got the FF, you've got like Chang guy in there throwing down. But at the same time, you've got the smaller characters, you've got Carly, you've got J. Jonah Jameson in there, you've got all his buddies at work. And while it feels like a lot, it doesn't feel too complicated too busy. You are invested in every single character. Oh, Dan, you're amazing. I, there are no... I, I was just thinking of all the superlatives I could call you. Um, but you're just a great, great story writer. Number two, the moment with J. Jonah Jameson rallying uh, his, his big speech at the end. It was just awesome. How long is it going to be until that guy is President of the United States? It was perfect. However he managed to be where he is, what he's done with the whole Spider Slayer Army, security guards things, whatever you think of him for doing that, the guy knows how to make a speech to his constituents. Number three, Peter Parker rallying the troops, you know, the good citizens of, of New York. Um, it was just inspired, it really was. Number four, Peter's pure joy at being able to be Spider-Man but without the costume. Sure, you know, Peter, Spidey, he's been unmasked, he's been masked, he's managed to get everyone to forget he's Peter Parker, but right now, no one, you know, will even have a shadow of a doubt, you know, not shadow of a doubt, but will never realise that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. He can go out there, he can spin his webs. He can, you know, jump up on buildings and climb up them, hit the guys, because, you know, everyone's got these powers now. He is just one of hundreds of just normal human beings who live in New York fighting the bad guys. It was just superb. Fifth reason why this comic was so good. The intrigue is still in there, especially with Madame Webb putting, you know, her, her, her little thoughts in again, making us think what the hell is going to happen. And we've got the whole anti-venom and the venom um, kind of subplot now. One of these guys at the end 
is not going to survive. Who is it? It's nice to see, you know, Anti-Venom, his powers, as we already knew, kind of cancelled out Peter's, so it's obviously going to cancel out all the normal human beings who have got Spidey powers now. I can see him being a big, big part um, towards the end of, of this, this, this event. Number six, the humour in it. You know, despite all of this madness and craziness, you know, Dan Slot just hits us and hits us with these hilarious one-liners. And, you know, my face when I'm reading it, it's just grinning, it's laughing, it's smirking. There's no frown on my face whatsoever when I'm reading this issue. And finally, number seven, last but by no means least, the artwork. Ramos... He was born to draw Spidey. He is a Spidey artist through and through. The only way this comic could have got any better, and it is perfect as it is, is if my favourite, Chris Bacalow, had drawn it. But no, it was Ramos. I'm perfectly happy with Ramos on this title. He makes it dynamic. He makes everything just seem so kinetic and just full of movement. I love it. It was, without doubt, a great issue. I have two predictions for this title. First one, I believe not everyone is going to lose their spider powers by the end of this event. We all know, you know, it's, it's got to end up where, you know, they find a cure for this virus. You can't have a whole island full of people with spider powers. But I bet you some people will get to keep them my second prediction and this to be honest is more of a wish rather than I think will actually happen Carly Cooper is going to die this is the one thing out of from this issue that not bugged me but I just thought it's, she's fallen into it a little bit too easily she's taken to this whole spider, having spider powers way too easily sure you've got the spider strength now sure you've got the webs and and the spidey sense but she's doing a bit too good a job of it and i think something should or will happen to her for being so bloody cocky <laughs> question and this is because i've not been I've only just kind of recently, with the point one issue, come back to the Amazing Spider-Man universe. Do we actually know who is in room six at the laboratories? Do we have any idea who it might be? Dan, if you're watching, <laughs> who's in that room? Anyway, Amazing Spider-Man. Amazing. Now, I said... Another Marvel book which is just knocking it out of the park, but on the absolute other end of the spectrum, it's dark, it's dirty in a good way, and it is just chilling. Chilling is the word. It's Uncanny X-Force, it's number 14, and it's part four of the Dark Angel Saga. And... Oh, we're in Marvel's dark side. Remender, Rick Remender, what are you doing to me? Marvel have two of the best story writers on their books right now. This is our Uncanny X-Force team. They are up against Archangel, who has completely taken over Warren now. And he's got the backing of the four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Um, and he's got... Holocaust as well turned up and um, just for extra backup and you know we've got them fighting for their lives and basically really for the death of a fellow teammate um, they're all out to take out Archangel Warren Worthington and it's violent it's bloody you know I'm surprised this this is verging on a max series it really is but it's so well done. Wolverine taken out like that. Phantom X taken out like that. Betsy gives it her all. She really does. 
Um, she takes out most of the the horsemen, and you know she goes for the kill. But you know, misses by an inch purposefully. But you might as well have missed by a mile. And you know what's great about this? It's the humanity of it. You know, these guys may be mutants, and we always have this idea of it's humans versus mutants. But, God, the human side of Betsy in this. She is being asked to kill her lover. How difficult for anyone is that? And it is that humanity that Remenda, you know, pushes forward and shows us, you know, this is a difficult thing. Sure, they've been training to do this for for months and months, but when it comes down to it, when it comes to the real deal, it changes. Anyway, great, fantastic issue. And Opina back on artwork. It's, oh, just the artwork alone is just luscious. It really is. I didn't realise how much I'd missed this artwork from, from like previous story arcs. Um, it just fits Uncanny X-Force to a T. And that was it for this week. What did you think of Spider-Man? What did you think of Uncanny X-Force? Let me know. Comment down there. If you're a new viewer, subscribe up there. Thumb it up. Do a video response. I'll accept it so everyone can see it on my page as well. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.